Have you ever wondered about the significance of the red heifer in the ancient Israelite rituals? Let's delve into the Book of Numbers, chapter 19, a chapter devoted to the enigmatic red heifer. This was no ordinary cow. It was a rare breed, completely red without a single white or black hair. It had to be perfect without any physical defect or blemish, and it had never been yoked or worked. This red heifer was at the heart of a purification ritual among the Israelites. They were taught by God that the ashes of the red heifer, when mixed with spring water, would cleanse a person who had become ritually impure. It was not just a simple act of cleanliness, but a deeply spiritual exercise in sanctification and renewal. This intriguing ritual serves as a testament to the meticulous details of the Israelites' religious practices. So, how does this purification process unfold, you ask? Let's delve into the verses that paint a vivid picture of this ancient ritual. The Book of Numbers, chapter 19, verses 1 to 10, provide a detailed account of the purification process involving the red heifer. The priest plays a pivotal role in this ceremony. Dressed in his holy vestments, he oversees the slaughtering of the heifer outside the camp. The location of this act is significant, symbolizing the separation of the holy from the common, the pure from the impure. Now the priest doesn't just stand by passively, he actively participates in the ritual, dipping his finger in the heifer's blood and sprinkling it seven times towards the tent of meeting. The number seven, often associated with completion in biblical texts, accentuates the gravity of the process. Following the blood sprinkling, the entire heifer is burned. This isn't a simple act of incineration, it's a sacrificial burning where every single element of the heifer its hide, flesh, blood and dung is consumed by the flames. The ritual doesn't stop there. Specific elements are added to the fire, cedar wood, hyssop and scarlet stuff. Each carries a symbolic weight. Cedar wood, known for its resistance to decay, represents strength and permanence. Hyssop, often used for cleansing, symbolizes purification, and the scarlet stuff, it's a vibrant reminder of life and vitality. The priest then washes his clothes and bathes his body in water, becoming temporarily unclean until evening. The ashes of the heifer, now infused with the symbolic elements, are collected and stored outside the camp in a clean place. They are used for the water of impurity, a means for purification. This ritual, in all its complexity, underscores the importance of purity in the Israelite community. It reflects their commitment to maintaining a clear boundary between the sacred and the profane, the clean and the unclean. It's a testament to their dedication to uphold the laws and commandments bestowed upon them. The complexity of this ritual underscores the importance of purity in the Israelite community. What happens when the Israelites become impure and how do they restore their purity? The book of Numbers chapter 19 talks about impurity or tumor within the Israelite community. This isn't about morality, but a spiritual condition needing attention. Sources of impurity are mainly linked to death. Touching a corpse, staying in enclosed spaces with a body, or even contacting a grave could make an Israelite impure. Death, in their understanding, opposes God, the life giver. Hence, any encounter with death needs a purification process to restore life-spirituality balance. This isn't a simple formality, but a ritual using the red heifer's ashes mixed with running water on day three and seven of impurity. A clean person sprinkles this on the impure, signifying their community, re-entry and restored relationship with God. Without this process, an impure person faces excommunication, a spiritual severance from the community and God. Impurity, it appears, is not merely a physical state, but a spiritual one with significant implications. Are you ready for the next chapter? Just click here to go straight to it.